So we're going to talk about why most fish are in the deep sea. This Water. is a fact that uh, some people know, some people don't. It was not something, well, it was something that I had sort of known prior to a couple of days ago. I knew that there was a large amount of fish biomass in the deep sea compared to, you know, the upper sea. But uh, I did not know that the majority of fish are in the deep sea. Uh, so we're going to talk about why that is because I did some research. Uh, and actually, today for the first time, I have my first sponsor, which is Curiosity Stream. And they helped me a ton with the information in the presentation. And then they inspired this whole concept of this video. So I'll explain that whole thing a little bit later. First thing we need to talk about when we talk about why there's a lot of fish biomass in the deep sea is the lantern fish. If you guys don't know what the lantern fish is, it's just this little dude here. It's just a small deep sea fish, minnow sized. It's got photophores, you know, bioluminescence like a bunch of a uh, bunch of deep sea fish have. Uh, Mycdophum punctatum, it's the Latin name. Who knows if I'm pronouncing it right? I certainly don't. But the most interesting thing about the lantern fish, or I guess maybe one of the most interesting things about the lantern fish, is that there are 500 and 50 to 660 estimated million metric tons of biomass of the lantern fish in the ocean. It's hard to put in perspective because I'm sure you guys don't just know, you know, right off the top of your head how much biomass <laughs> uh, normal fish are, but I'm going to put it into perspective in a bit, but just keep that in mind. That's why uh, that's why this is important. That's what makes this uh, fish so special. But we're going to talk a little bit more about interesting stuff about the lantern fish. So one interesting thing is the false seafloor. So there are so, so many lantern fish in the ocean that at certain times the Navy has mistook a school of lantern fish for the seafloor, okay? Like submarines are going and they use sonar, boats use sonar. And the way that sonar is, is you send out a signal and when it bounces back, then you know how deep you know, the ocean floor is. And that's how you map the ocean floor, by the distance and the amount of time it takes for sonar to bounce back. Well, there are so, so many lantern fish in the ocean that for a while we had what was called a false sea floor. And people thought using sonar that areas were a lot more shallow than they actually are because they would send out a sonar signal and it would bounce back off of the giant schools of lantern fish rather than off, off of the actual sea floor. So for a while, our mapping of the sea floor was pretty off. Another thing about them is they do what's called dial vertical migrations. Now, a lot of fish, whales, things do this in the ocean. Basically, it is the largest migration that is done by any creature. All right. But when you think of migration, you think of like birds flying south or, you know, things like that to warmer temperatures. That's horizontal migration. You know, they're spreading out. This is vertical migration for every night in the ocean. Things come up from the deep sea, thousands of meters up from the deep sea to come and feed on uh, zooplankton at the surface. And then during the daytime, they go back to the deep sea. And lanternfish, you can actually see them, this is a lanternfish in this diagram, are a huge, huge, uh, huge part of that. When you consider that how many lanternfish there actually are, they make up a large part of the dial vertical migrations, which means that although lanternfish are these deep sea fish, you actually can, you know, at nighttime, just catch them right near the surface, you know, like any other fish. Now, I talked earlier about when we first started the presentation about the amount of lanternfish. I said 550 million to 660 million metric tons, okay, of biomass of lanternfish in the ocean. And that's really hard to put into perspective. So I'm going to try and give you some some comparisons. So you have some ideas of how much lanternfish there actually are in the world. So first of all, and slightly less impressive, is this is the percent biomass of deep sea fish. So all of the biomass of all deep sea fish in the world, okay, 65% of it comes from this one fish, is 65% of the deep sea biomass. Which you might be thinking, okay, well the deep sea is kind of sparse, you know. Deep sea is kind of sparse, you know, there's not a lot there. So 65% of a small amount of fish doesn't seem like that big of a deal, okay? So let's put lanternfish in a perspective that you might uh, you might relate to a little bit more. How about the world fisheries catch? The left bar is the biomass of lanternfish in the ocean. The right bar is every single fish caught in every single part of the world by every single person for an entire year. 
There are 10 times more lanternfish in the ocean than an entire year of human fishing. Think of all of the fishing that is done with those vessels across the entire world. There's 10 times more lanternfish in the ocean. So the basic idea is there's a shitload of lanternfish, okay? There's a ton. And without a doubt, this contributes to why there's a significant amount of biomass of lanternfish, uh, of why there's a significant amount of biomass in the sea. This is the statistic that inspired this presentation. An estimated 90% of fish biomass is located in the deep sea. Think about that. You think of the deep sea as this like barren wasteland, but 90% of the biomass of the actual weight of fish is located in the deep sea. And that information, where I actually got that from and what inspired this entire presentation is from this. It's called Ocean Twilight Zone. Um, Basically, this super sick documentary that I was watching on Curiosity Stream, who sponsored the stream today, they basically gave me access to the site and gave me an account and just let me look around at the different things that are on there. And it's basically just a massive catalog of films and TV shows. And particularly interesting to me, there's a shitload of stuff related to fish. And so I just started watching various documentaries related to fish. And this one documentary, like halfway through, they're talking about these, these deep sea fish. And the guy just nonchalantly, the narrator goes, 90% of fish biomass is located in the deep sea. And that seemed wrong to me. I mean, that seems absolutely insane that there's so much biomass in the deep sea. So I started doing some research and I found some really interesting things. And the reason why there's so much biomass in the deep sea is really interesting. So it actually just me watching this video from Curiosity Stream actually inspired this entire video. Basically, all the information that I'm presenting today came from this film, and then I started watching more. There's a, a film called Deep Ocean, which had David Attenborough narrating it, and then there's a film called A Curious World, which was super cool to look at. Uh, and basically, combining all of this information, I have created this awesome presentation uh, for you guys, and I'm like not done with stuff to look at. So just look at this. This is what happens when you search fish on Curiosity Stream, and these are all over 20 minutes long. So these are like films, not like shorts. This is what happens when you search fish. So I've got a shitload of stuff to go through on the Curiosity Stream uh, website. So if you guys are interested, there's a ton of stuff, and it's not just like nature, you know, it's not just like fish and stuff like that. They have all sorts of stuff. They have history and all sorts of other stuff, you know, politics, all that. I'm particularly interested in the nature stuff and the fish stuff because there is absolutely a ridiculous amount of content. It is like literally textbooks worth of information on content that you can watch and learn about. And because I got to work with them and because I enjoyed their stuff, we decided to work together and they gave me a code. The code is AVNJ or you can just go to curiositystream.com slash AVNJ and you get an entire year subscription for 15 bucks and you can watch all this stuff. So this is the stuff I plan to watch. We got Alaska Extreme, Surviving the Lagoon, Hot Tuna, Lionfish, Alien of the Sea. I'm excited for that one because I feel like I know a, I hear a lot about Lionfish but not know a lot of it. A lot about lionfish. Saving the dinosaur fish, which is about sturgeon. Fun fact, I'm considering getting a, a, a sturgeon tattoo. If you guys didn't know, I have a tattoo of a Cynodontus eupterus on my back, a catfish on my back, and I'm considering getting a sturgeon tattoo on my forearm. So I'd love to learn more about sturgeon. And then there's night at the aquarium, which just seems super hype. Like what happens at night at the aquarium? So yeah, I have all this stuff to watch and you guys can literally watch all of this and all of the other stuff that I showed for just $15 for a year. It's absolutely ridiculous. I paid $150 for my textbook for my fishery science class in college, and it was mostly filler. <laughs> I think I learned probably more from the, the couple of films that I've watched on Curiosity Stream than from <laughs> the $150 textbooks. So now we need to talk about the explanations for the biomass in the deep sea. So when we talk about the deep sea, we're talking about the areas where light does not reach. So we're talking about the bathypelagic zone and the abyssopelagic zone, these areas here. And you might notice something when you look at this, this map of the ocean and the depth, you'll notice that most of the ocean is taken up by this space, by this quote unquote deep sea space, okay? And in fact, 75% of the oceans inhabitable space, so places where things can live in the ocean, 75% of it, is in these deep sea zones, all right, the bathypelagic and the abyssopelagic zones. So you might be thinking that's an explanation for why there's so much biomass 
in the deep sea. Okay, but that doesn't tell the full story because 90% of the biomass is in the deep sea. Okay, yet only 2% of marine species live in the deep sea. So if 90% of the biomass is in 75% of the inhabitable space and only 2% of the marine species live there, the numbers suddenly don't add up. It doesn't make sense. There has to be something crazy going on for that much biomass to be existing in the deep sea. And this is one of those movies, you know those movies or those like TV shows, the crime shows where like the guy dies and then his wife is there like right at the beginning and you're kind of suspicious of his wife the whole time and then it turns out that his wife killed him. Yeah, you knew the killer all along. It's literally just the lanternfish. There's just a crap ton of lanternfish. It is the single most widely distributed, diverse and populous vertebrate in the world. It's just absolutely absurd how many lanternfish there are. With If you take lanternfish out of the equation, this statistic of the 90% biomass in the deep sea is no longer even close to true, right? 2% of marine species are in the deep sea. Okay, so think about this. If 90% of all fish biomass is in the deep sea, of, of all ocean fish biomass is in the deep sea, okay? And 65% of deep sea biomass is lantern fish alone. What's 65% of 90, right? Like 58? That means like 58% of all of the mass of fish in the ocean are just this fucker. Literally just this dude. That's it. That is like 58% of all biomass in the ocean. It's just absolutely absurd how many lanternfish there are. And another interesting fact about the lanternfish, you guys know the Amazon rainforest? You guys know how we're like trying to protect the Amazon rainforest? Uh, because, you know, we create a lot of CO2. We are polluting the environment by making a lot of carbon dioxide. And one of the best things at absorbing carbon dioxide is trees right so we have this whole thing it's this whole you know worldwide effort to save the amazon rainforest because they absorb a ton of carbon dioxide for us right they are they are keeping the environment healthy we want more trees not less trees okay well did you know that lanternfish absorb more carbon dioxide than the entire amazon rainforest so <laughs> It's, uh, it's absolutely ridiculous how many of them there are, how much of an impact they have on the world, and how basically no one learns about them, knows about them, or, you know, really even sees them, observes them. They have such a huge impact on the world in absorbing carbon dioxide, having such a massive biomass. They have the whole false sea floor thing. They're a huge part of dial vertical migrations. They hold ocean ecosystems and really the planet's ecosystem together with how many fucking lantern fish there are. And yet still, basically nobody knows uh, about them. I mean, a lot of you guys probably had not even heard of the lantern fish prior today. It's, it's absolutely insane. And the last thing I wanted to do was show this video. Most fish species aren't in the deep sea, but lantern fish sure as hell are. So the original question was, why are there so many fish in the deep sea? Well, the answer is, there aren't so many fish in the deep sea, not so many fish species, at least. You know, there's very few, only 2% of marine species are even in the deep sea. But lantern fish sure as hell are there, and they make up such a massive amount of the world's biomass that they alone compensate for the deep sea. Look at this lanternfish. I just love this video. Isn't this so surreal? This like cool ass deep sea fish. And those are the photophores. That's the light that it makes. I just took this little gif from a video to show you guys. I think they're pretty fucking cool. So what did you guys think? Do you like lanternfish? How small is it? Eh, like that-ish. I know that's not a great scale because you're looking at my camera. What questions do we have? So there's less species, but more population of those species. Not even of those species. Of the 2% of marine species in the deep sea, there's only one of them that is making up 58% of fish biomass, and it's lanternfish. It's not a multiple species thing, it's just the lanternfish. Are they a keystone species for the entire ocean? I don't know if they're recognized as a keystone species, like scientifically, like if it's written down anywhere, but if all the lanternfish disappeared, uh, yeah, there would be a huge problem. Zooplankton would be out of control. A ton of fish would lose their food sources. I mean, you can't just lose that much biomass, the carbon dioxide like we already talked about. Can you eat them? I mean, nothing's stopping you. 
you could eat them if you wanted. There are, there are um, lanternfish fisheries. I think it's South Africa where people have fisheries for lanternfish at nighttime where they'll catch them during the dial vertical migrations. No, all fish, all living things absorb carbon dioxide, Matthew. There's just so many lantern fish that they are absorbing more carbon dioxide than the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> yeah, you explore the deep sea expecting all kinds of cool shit and you just get uh, lantern fish for hours and hours and hours. Whoa.